Calabasas, Kendra. She writes most of the material we do, and is our singer and the guitar player, and Kathy Stafford, down here on fiddle and violin. It's two instruments. Thank you. Okay, so I've got some people I want to introduce, but I do want to take just a, a half a minute and say that I grew up, some of you might have also grown up in the same circumstances. Um, I grew up with parents and grandparents who remembered the Great Depression. And um, when I was about, I don't know, nine or ten, we moved to a house that had a great big backyard with a bunch of trees in it, which my grandmother and my mother insisted that we cut down entirely because, because they knew from the Great Depression that if you couldn't feed yourself, you weren't very useful. And they believed that the last thing, the most important thing for you besides your education and your health was the ability to feed yourself. That is a lesson we've lost in this country. And, and the people sitting right here are some of the few people around who appreciate that and understand it. And it is, it is Yvonne who has been the mother hen to us all. Over the last two decades and um, and truly truly Yvonne not only Yvonne was ahead of the internet you know? <laughs> she, she was the WWW before there was one so so Yvonne it is it is I know you're not going away so it's not a sadness but we certainly you you see how many people you have brought out I I've seen people I haven't seen in 20 years so, You, you, can, you can see the incredible amount of affection in this whole wide community of Southern California for all that you do and all that you bring to us and, uh, and how you keep us all together and keep us educated and have created this huge family of people who love you very much. Um, I guess that we could find out. Now, let's start. Yvonne's first group was in 1995. So anybody who's been working with Yvonne since, let's say, before 2000, would you please stand up? Let's, let's come up. I would have to say that, that used to, when I address groups like this, I was the youngest person in the group. It's kind of strange now. What happened? I mean, I'm looking around and there are a lot of people younger than me. But um, let's go up to 2005. So who who is? I want the 2000s. I want the 2000s to stay standing. And let's have the 2005s. So so let's then bring it up to 2010. Keep on. Those who have been with the program since before 2010. And now. You, Spring chickens who have been with us since 2015 are everybody. Please stand and give a, a say or do or is that oh. <laughs> I mean like I don't want to embarrass you or anything. Although although let's do that. You can swallow 
Oh, isn't that barbecue good? <laughs> I just flew back from Virginia, and th there was a railway train that I wanted to see. And there were four barbecue shops in Manassas, Virginia, and I didn't have time to stop at any one of them. <laughs> that was a tragedy. <laughs> First of all, the young lady, the attractive young lady who I picked up on the street and brought to this show, will she please stand? Yes, it would be you. If you haven't figured it out yet, and not Henry Huntington the Jr. <laughs> uh, there were a number of boxes if you folks could bring them out, who put them away with gift wrap, and I'll tell you a little bit about them. At Vaughn, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's a lot of stories one could talk about uh, that work with the university. I myself tried very hard to contribute whatever I could. And so I even called the president's office up in Oakland and asked the secretary if the president of the university would not attend this tonight. And I'll tell you, she said that's correct. She will not attend it. <laughs> <laughs> so then I started doing what we at UC Davis uh, was uh, the modus operandi. There were all manner of programs, grants. I remember one grant was to find the very best potato chip potato. And every Friday afternoon, Hunt Hall would be filled with the smell of six fat fryers frying potato chips. And everybody who was in Hunt Hall, here, you just put them on top of the speaker. Everybody who was in Hunt Hall on Friday afternoons would have a chance to eat all the potato chips they wanted fresh made if they were willing to fill out the form that says this is a very good one or not a very good one or something. I think the university got something like a quarter million dollars for that. So I got the thinking that maybe it's about time that we start contacting some of the old contacts to see if they remember Yvonne and might be able to uh, provide us this evening, and Yvonne, some entertaining gifts. And I can tell you, it has been very good, the response. Now we have here, let's see, which one is this? Ah, we have here, I, there is a railroad. Now, those of you who know me, <coughs> that you know that I have the nickname the Railway Baron because I've traveled all over. I was the station master in Davis. I've traveled all over by train, written books on the subject. I was looking through my book of trains and I found out that there is a railroad in the middle of Oklahoma. <coughs> It's called the Farm Rail Railroad. And the farmers got together and built their own railroad to service their crops. So I called them up, I explained to them what Yvonne was doing, <laughs> and I asked them if they had anything that they would care to provide for this evening. And so from Custer City, Oklahoma. Now, if you know anything about Oklahoma, you know that it is the one state that has more Native Americans than any other state, but they still have a city named Custer City. <laughs> from, Custer, from Farm Rail Company, from Custer City, Oklahoma, 73639. If one, could you come up here? They promised us a mating pair of Farm Rail cabooses. <laughs> yeah, please open the... This is a... This is a mating pair of farm rail cabooses. 
He was in charge, so just say <laughs> <clears throat> Hold it up. This would be the female. <laughs> and this is the male. <laughs> now you notice that in this case, the, f the female is the greater of the two. This happens in biology. <laughs> and it happens with cabooses too. <laughs> now the next, we used to call this bakshish when I was in Berkeley. You're not supposed to say that here. Um, the next item, is from Ag Organics of Weed, California, 96094. There actually was a weed science department at Davis. I guess he moved on and graduated and found the town. This is from the Weed Ag, sorry, Ag Organic, only organic, from Weed, California. <laughs> Is there a drum roll? <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. Oh, yeah. oh, look at all the babies. This, <laughs> this is a a California lady giant ladybug whose water just broke. <laughs> These hop, I've never, I've never seen one hop before, but they hop. And last but not, but least, not least. Whatever, is it the tree <laughs> That's life in my house up until about an hour ago. <laughs> now, last but not least, I'm going to have to wait for Rachel to replenish her. Maybe it's maybe it's just as well for Rachel that the president of the university didn't attend <laughs> after this. Finally, I called the M McCormick Reaper Company. <laughs> now get this, it's a real place at French Lick, Indiana, 47432. I put in the zip code so you know that I wasn't making this up. So, direct from the McCormick Reaper Company in French Lick, Indiana, the model number one oh. McCormick Reader. Oh. 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 And that's how we're going to have lunch from here on. <laughs> Speaking of lunch. David, are you working this thing? <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. It's it's vegan, it's organic, it's artisanal. It's work. Now, it has an interesting story. What really happened is that there was a hardware store here in Pasadena up until a couple of months ago. It had been in Pasadena for 110 years. It was called Berg Hardware. And they closed. Uh, the kids, the grandkids or the great grandkids didn't want to go into hardware. They had a home on Lake Tahoe and they decided to sell the property. So I went over there because they were always a good place to go for that right screw. <laughs> you want me to repeat that? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I had that ready. Now, when they closed the doors, they gave to me what they had found in the back room going back 110 years that the great grandfather had purchased but apparently never sold. Maybe electricity had come in by then. You know, so that's a piece of Pasadena history. Okay. I hope you have lots of opportunity to use it. Okay. I want to tell you that it has been a most unusual, a, a never dull uh, life with the university as seen through my wife's eyes. Now, those of you who know, might know who my family is. My, I, have not, I have been attached to the university in one way or the other going back to the 1960s. And this sort of ends our relationship directly with the university, but they won't forget us and I won't forget them, or we won't forget them. So I'm gonna turn the microphone over to... Well, you could turn it over to the university. Uh, <laughs> Keith Nathaniel. Thank you very much, Tom. <laughs> um, you know Keith Nathaniel. He is the county director of the extension. And it's nice to meet you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. How's everyone? Good. Yeah? This is Yvonne's retirement party. Come on now. How's everybody? So thank you. Uh, again, my name is Keith Nathaniel, and I'm the county director for the University of California Cooperative Extension here in Los Angeles. And I have the pleasure of saying thank you to Yvonne for all of her work. I think it's 35 years with the university and 21 here in LA County. And the interesting thing is that Yvonne and I started in the same month, the same year, and we're 17 days apart, at least in LA County. So I believe you started April 1st or somewhere thereabouts, and I started April 18th, 1994. So we've had a long, uh, wonderful relationship and opportunity to work together uh, through our Master Gardener program and through our 4-H program, which is one of the programs that I have responsibility for. So it's been a pleasure, and I've really enjoyed uh, getting to know Yvonne over these last 21 years or so. And in the last three and a half or so years, just to uh, work more directly at least with her through the Master Gardener program. So uh, on behalf of the University of California and President Napolitano, Napolitano is not here, so I'm here in her stead, I guess. Uh, we say thank you, Yvonne, for all of the wonderful years of service that you've given to the university and especially to LA County. And as you can see by the showing here, there's a great deal of uh, support uh, for the work and the contributions that you've made and the impact that you've had on our county in terms of gardening and helping people to grow their own food and helping, to pe help, helping people to have more sustainable livelihoods. And so we thank you very, very much. And so with that, we have uh, a couple of um, presentations that we want to give to you. So if you can come up, Yvonne. So one of which is from the city of Los Angeles, and while I won't read everything, it essentially says thanks to Yvonne for all of her work and dedication and service to the city of Los Angeles, because obviously um, working in LA County, you're certainly gonna work in the city of Los Angeles at some point as well. So this is from the city of, uh, city of Los Angeles, signed by Tom LaBonge and the president, Herb Wesson. The next presentation is a certificate from the California State Senate, and it is signed by Senator Liu, and you know her, right? And it is dated June 7, 2015, for 35 years of dedicated service to the University of California Property Extension, presented to Juan Sabio. And the final commendation is from the County of Los Angeles, 
And I will read this one in part because, as you know, we have a partnership with the County of Los Angeles, and a part of why we exist is through that partnership. And so with that, I'll read uh, this commendation. Yvonne Savio, retirement, 21 years of dedicated service, Master Garden Programming Manager, April 1st, 1994 through July 1st, 2015, UC Cooperative Extension, Los Angeles County. In recognition of dedicated service to the affairs of the community and for the civic pride demonstrated by numerous contributions for the, for the benefit of all the citizens of Los Angeles County, signed by Mike Antonovich, which is the district that you live in. Is that correct? Yes, so a commendation from the County of Los Angeles to Yvonne Savio. I get to be an MC for a minute. I, she'll have a moment? Okay, all right, she'll have her turn later. So, all right, all right cool. All right, so once again, I see John Kabashima, a colleague, Dohi, a colleague, and Valerie, a colleague. But I'm going to introduce Dr. Rachel Searles, who was the county director prior to me assuming the role, and she's going to take over the agenda at this point. Dr. Searles. It is just unbelievable and kind of overwhelming to see all this support and all this love for Yvonne. Let's give Yvonne another big hand. working with Yvonne for more than 20 years. Um, I joined the University of California Cooperative Extension in 1988 as the school garden coordinator and in 1994 um, Yvonne contacted me. She was up at UC Davis working in the vegetable crops department and she said hey do you think there might be an opportunity at your office? I would I want to come home. Pasadena is my home. I want to be close to my mom and um, you think there's any opportunities? Well, it just so happened that our Master Gardener program at that time was pretty much defunct. We had had a Master Gardener program. It had done well for a few years, but around 91, 92, the person who coordinated it left for another job in Florida, I think, and so it just kind of sat there inactive. So uh, UC Davis's loss was UC Cooperative Extension's gain and uh, Yvonne came to Los Angeles County and uh, we charged her with starting up our Master Gardener program again after about a three-year hiatus and you know we knew Yvonne was an amazing writer she wrote the, for the newspaper up in Davis and she had this passion for gardening so I think we knew it was going to be like a great uh, mix Yvonne and the Master Gardener program but I don't think we had the foresight to see like how amazing this program would become under Yvonne's tutelage and under her guidance. Um, so all of you know the statistics. Um, more than 1.3 million Los Angeles residents reached, over a thousand volunteers trained. Um, you know, her contributions have been just amazing. And I think that um, there's been sort of two secrets to her success uh, as she's sort of raised up this Master Gardener program in Los Angeles County. And one is um, she came to the program and immediately embraced the idea that our Master Gardener program in Los Angeles was going to be about helping people grow food. Uh, different Master Gardener programs around the state have different, you know, different objectives. Um, you know, working with ornamentals and, and homeowners with yards. And Yvonne and I wanted to focus on reaching people in communities that really needed more available, healthy, affordable food that they could grow right in their yards or right at their local community garden. And quite frankly, this what Yvonne wanted to do is um, popular now. At that time, it was not popular necessarily so she was ahead of the curve she was ahead of the internet curve as Jim mentioned she was also head of the you know urban agriculture urban gardening urban homesteading curve those are things that she's been in front of as well so um, our master gardeners are in community gardens they're in school gardens they're at fairs and farmers markets 
Uh, they're at senior centers. They've been on the front lines of helping Angelinos grow their own food in their own communities. And I think that's been an amazing contribution that Yvonne has made. Um, yay! <laughs> our program is unique under Yvonne's guidance is we really let our master gardeners develop their own programs in their own communities based on the needs they see and because of that we have master gardeners embedded in uh, nonprofit organizations community organizations and communities throughout Los Angeles County we have this amazing network of volunteers and it's amazing to me how I go to meetings all over Los Angeles County and I constantly run into people who identify as master gardeners. They're part of an organization but they also identify as master gardeners even if it's been a few years since they've been actively on our roster. They are still master gardeners at heart who raise your hand if you you aren't an active MG but you still consider yourself an MG due to all the the training you got. See you're you're still an MG. So, <laughs> so I'm going to be trying to fill Yvonne's shoes with a lot of help from Valerie Burrell. Valerie, can you stand up? Because people email you, but they don't necessarily see you. And I think we'll have a lot of help from some volunteer committees, because basically, as I see it, it's going to take a village to run the LA County Master Gardener program. Uh, we'll all be working together. <laughs> and I hope that um, I will be meeting those of you I haven't met before. We will be continuing Yvonne's mission and Yvonne's passion for helping people grow their own food in the communities that need it most. And I look forward very much to working with you on that. And I, I need to make a few thank yous here. Um, first, uh, some of you have donated to uh, a Master Gardener Scholarship Fund in honor of Yvonne. So that is very much appreciated. We've got about $900 in the fund at this point. And that's going to uh, provide scholarships for Master Gardener trainees who are especially dedicated to um, working in underserved communities and helping them to raise food and are, it's also going to be need-based. So this is going to be continuing Yvonne's legacy and Yvonne's focus. I also have to thank some people who really made this event happen. First, let's thank Jim Folsom and the Huntington. And his assistant, Danielle Rudin, was very, very incredible committee of Master Gardener volunteers who really organized this event. Will you all stand up please, those of you who were on the committee? Anna, stand up who made these super <laughs> so the final person I need to thank is Yvonne so she's gonna have to come up here again and then she will get to stay up here and say her words but um, we've got a few gifts for you Yvonne from your your master gardeners and your legion of dedicated fans and friends um, first of all there's so many memories and so many great photos we asked master gardeners and Yvonne's friends to send in pictures of Yvonne and their remembrances of Yvonne and we put together this fabulous book for you that we hope you'll enjoy it's a scrapbook of the millennium. <laughs> 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 Mud, where are you? Is Mud still there? Mud's over there. That's his photo. This Thank you, Mud. Mud's photo. Thank you, Mud. I know where you live. I'll get more. So we hope you enjoy that book. And then we know that Yvonne 
loves to travel, she loves to garden, she has so many things that she enjoys doing and uh, we wanted her to have a little fun money to do the things she likes to do. And so in this envelope, many, many people have contributed and we have quite a nice stash of cash for Yvonne to enjoy somewhere in the neighborhood of $2,000. <laughs> And now you're going to get to hear from the person that you're really here to hear from. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Rachel. It's certainly nice to know that uh, your activities and your own passions have been shared by a lot of other people, especially your supervisor. <laughs> Many people don't have that opportunity and that good luck, and I certainly have had that over the years. Um, I have to tell all of you that you have meant the world to me. <laughs> <laughs> and it really has been one of those absolute delights of my life um, that I've had the excuse to work with all of you and people like Jim and folks at the different, um, well isn't that appropriate? <laughs> Just to be able to, to do what is important to you and that you can do that. That, you know, you as master gardeners in LA County are distinct from every single other kind of master gardener program because you are the ones that have been passionate about helping folks. Initially, it was just low income folks because that's where our funding came from. And it was for edibles that because that's where the funding came from. And then as, it evolved, as the funding evolved, we ended up being more broadly, I was going to say focused, but that kind of is a, an anti-word there. We were able to spread out our, our interests and have you be able to help more people on more bases, you know, starting with doubt tolerant plants and the environment and not just whether it was cucumbers or lettuce. And I think that was something that really attracted a lot of you um, after initially you came into the program because it was helping low-income folks. And all of you, I think, have kept that passion to it um, and that focus while having the ability to be able to be more broadly, um, spread your expertise more broadly. And I think that's really been wonderful. Um, I have to thank my husband for again going on two separate forays back home because there was something in the newspaper this morning that I never read. It's the horoscope. <laughs> and this morning I said, I think I'm going to read that today. I'll read it on my birthday. And I decided that today was going to be another day that I would read the horoscope. And of course, I always read it knowing that you're going to read into it no matter what, so of course it always comes out just precisely what you had wanted, but I couldn't believe what it was this morning because it was so apropos. You are determined to avoid emotional... Oh, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't bridge King James Bourbon. <laughs> 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 
One of us was something that um, today you will be highly lauded by groups of people, and you should go to these events and accept their praise because it is meant so fully. <laughs> you are determined to avoid emotional drama today. <laughs> Do not look to the past for answers. One thing for sure, you cannot hold on to the status quo. <laughs> and that certainly is the case with, um, you know, I, I have been your master gardener mom, the only one you've ever known. And so, <laughs> And so just the prospect of change worries a lot of you, and certainly any kind of change is, uh, can be enervating. And I certainly would like that to be the case for all of you. And just, um, you know, you're working with Rachel that indirectly you have been working with for 21 years that I've been in the, the nominal position of being head of the program. But she and Valerie have been um, tremendous in just dealing with the program all these years. And so that kind of change is not going to be change. It's going to be a continuing connection. Um, the, oh, Tom, the, um, my folks photo? I gave it to someone. <laughs> <laughs> Frame in bubble tank. Let, let me bring it up there. Okay. I wanted to to thank a bunch of people, and I think it uh, it starts with my folks. Like another place that I've been so lucky is that I got to move back home, and I wanted to. Um, when my dad had passed away, and my mom really needed help because of her arthritis. Um, uh, we were lucky enough, as Rachel has explained, that the university needed some help down here. And so I was able to shift from being up at UC Davis to be able to come down here. And luckily my mom was able to meet the first two classes of Master Gardeners. Um, she was already in a wheelchair then, but we met at my home and, and she could see that her just having me up in the garden, picking the lettuce and picking the melons and just doing everything up in the garden that I had done since I was a little kid, this was having an effect. That here these people were now coming to look at that garden and marvel at it and see her because she had been the inspiration for all of that. And this is my, my folks that have, um, my dad's best friend from Chicago when he had been in the, um, they worked at the Sears catalog art department. And that friend and my dad were doing some of the first work in color photography in the 30s. And so he came out here, uh, this is, I don't know when this was, maybe 85 or so, and took, and took this photograph of my folks up on the garden. And it's been my, um, my cherished photograph of them uh, because this is how I remember their looking. And so these are the folks that made me a gardener and therefore made you gardeners. <laughs> We have uh, done a lot of traveling, and Tom takes care of uh, the railroad travel because he would spec a story and then write something about a particular train in a particular direction and uh, destinations. And then I got to fill in the spaces by, okay, what cities are we at? What museums are there there? What community gardens are there? Um, what botanic gardens. And so we would end up doing a lot of traveling where I would get to rest 
during the train part of the travel, and he would get to have fun going to the gardens. And so it ended up being just a perfect way to travel around, whether it was in this country or in Europe. And so we, we certainly will be continuing to do some of that, because on many cases, when you go to a place, you find out some things that you know will draw you back, because you didn't know about them first off. Rachel, of course, helped me in just developing the program. Um, it was because of her encouragement and uh, insistence that our funding came from the USDA in order to help low-income folks grow more food that we were able to focus on that. And I was so proud when I would go to the different Master Gardener conferences, the coordinator conferences up in Davis, because we were special. You know, we help people who really needed help. And for a while that kind of worked. <laughs> and then it became apparently so a point of contention that here we were being exclusive because we were not serving everybody about all kinds of gardening. And so gradually the program shifted and we needed to be able to address everyone which of course is more appropriate, but I'm so glad that all of, most of you came in under the um, aegis of helping low-income folks, because I think that's the nurturing that is what makes our program and makes you as individuals really the most important master gardeners, and why I am so completely proud of all of you. So please give yourself a hand. Jim has been wonderful over the years. He has been so supportive, uh, both as the Huntington and as himself, in <coughs> helping our program and providing time. I mean, he's the head of the whole garden, and here he gives Master Gardener classes every year. So it's, it's just been uh, wonderful to be able to benefit by his expertise, um, and eternally, his class where he talks about vegetables as botany, it is always the class that everybody remarks as being the most novel class that there ever was and why they loved it thoroughly. <laughs> now for the future, of course, all of you have been asking me, what are you gonna do with all this free time? <laughs> And don't say yes to anything for at least a year. <laughs> Great wisdom, because those comments certainly came from folks that have retired. Um, Maggie, where are you? Maggie, would you stand up, please? <laughs> Maggie is the reason that you will thoroughly enjoy my new personal website, because Maggie made it. Yay. <laughs> you all to check in. Maggie, is there on the website, it says website by? Yes, it's on the bottom. Can they, do they just click on that? Yes. Okay, just click on it and give her lots of graphic art business, please. <laughs> okay, the website, I'll send this out, which I also will send to all the e-lists, but it is gardeninginla.net. And if any of you saw the, um, the article in yesterday's Saturday. Times mm -hmm. in the, uh, uh, the Saturday section, it gives the wrong yeah. URL. <laughs> so it does get gardening in LA correct, but it says it's .com. It's not, it's .net. But on the other hand, if you just Google gardening in LA, several pieces of the website do come up, so you'll be able to, to connect that. And the real purpose of the website, establishing it, is it, I'm hoping to have it serve as a hub that the e-lists to the general public that I've done for all these years, those will go dead. 
Rachel will continue to use those as they exist, but nobody will be added, and as email addresses change, they won't be repaired. So what I'm hoping is that this new website, it has an events section and a job opportunity section. And the events can be